This is what the rankings look like at the start of 2023. And as the season is already over, this is probably a great chance to go through how the rankings started and how the rankings ended in 2023 and what are the big changes to those rankings. And as you can notice already with some of the players in the top 10 to start the year, what actually happened to them to drop out of the top 10 and where are the players that ended up in the top 10 at the end of the year and how they got into the top 10 by the end of the season. So the first week of January, we had Djokovic winning in Adelaide, the USA winning the United Cup, but it didn't really result in too many ranking changes for those players. However, there were changes with Rublev going up two spots, and Runa going up one spot, pushing Oje Eliassime down a spot. Medvedev went down a spot, but Hercatch also falling out of the top 10 to start the year. We also had some ranking changes to the points with guys like Nadal, Oje Eliassime, and Medvedev losing points that they made up from 2022. The week before the Australian Open, nobody played, and we didn't have any changes to the rankings as the seeds were already set for the big slam. But then as we went to the Australian Open, Novak Djokovic won the event, got that 10th Australian Open, and it helped his ranking. He went up to number one in the world with City Pass, who made the final, going up a spot as well. Guys like Rublev, Fritz, Runa, and Herkatch also gaining spots, whereas guys like Alcaraz, who actually didn't play the Australian Open, he went down a spot. So did Kasper Ruud, and the two finals of 2022, Nadal and Medvedev, they went down four spots each, with Medvedev falling out of the top 10 completely, really capping off a terrible couple of months for him that started in 2022. So... So big changes to the rankings there with only the first month of the season down. First week of February, we had the Davis Cup, which meant nobody got any points and there was no changes to the rankings. The second week of February, though, we did have some changes with Fritz going up one spot thanks to making a semi-final in Dallas and Oje Eliassime dropping down a spot because he lost a lot of points from Rotterdam, a tournament that he won 12 months prior. Other points that were changed, City Pass, Rude, and Rublev also dropping points from the 2022 events at this time. Towards the end of February, we had some more changes with Medvedev getting back into the top 10 after winning in Rotterdam. We also had Alcaraz winning in Buenos Aires and Fritz winning in Delray Beach. However, those two players didn't get any boost in the rankings. Alcaraz actually lost points because he won a tournament 12 months ago that was worth more points in Rio. Final week of February, Medvedev continued to win by winning in Doha this time, and it helped him in the rankings with both Fritz and Medvedev getting a boost, pushing both Rublev and Nadal down the rankings. Djokovic, Tsitsipas, Rublev, and Nadal all losing points due to playing really well in Dubai and Acapulco in 2022. And then the first week of March, Medvedev wins a third title in a row, which resulted in him going up another spot in the rankings. Runa also went up a spot in the rankings. Guys like Djokovic, Rude, Fritz, and Rublev also gaining a lot of points thanks to successful weeks with guys like Rublev, Nadal, and Oje Eliassime dropping down the rankings again. Then the first Masters 1000 event of the year complete, Indian Wells. Alcaraz taking the win in Indian Wells, winning his first trophy here and beating some big names to do it. And it resulted in a massive change with Alcaraz getting back top spot. Medvedev also made the final of Indian Wells, makes him go up to one more spot as well. And guys like Oje Eliassime and Hercatch also benefiting from playing well at the event. Djokovic, he went down to number two with Fritz going down five spots after failing to defend the points from last year's event that he won. And of course, Nadal, he drops down four spots after failing to defend the points that he made from the final of last year. Then we went to Miami, and Medvedev wins another title, his fourth title in five events. And thanks to Alcaraz losing before the final, Djokovic, he regained top spot. Medvedev also got another boost in the rankings with Rublev and Sinner also going up. Alcaraz going down because he was the champion of Miami last year and he only made the semifinals this time around. Rude also dropping points due to the final of last year, not being able to defend that. And Hercatch also made a semifinal last year and didn't defend those points. Oje Eliassime also a victim of dropping points. So some big changes again and we're only three months into the year and the world number one ranking has already changed hands a couple of times. Onto the clay now and Rude wins his first title of the year in Estoril and got a little boost in the rankings with Sinner also getting a boost as well. Medvedev and Runa end up dropping spots as a result. Then to the big start of the clay court season with Rublev taking out his first 1,000 title in Monte Carlo in what was a very, very stacked event. Didn't get a boost in the rankings though, but guys like Rude, Medvedev and Runa, who actually made the final, did get a boost in the rankings. At the expense of City Pass and Oji Eliassime, of course, City Pass had won the event in 2022, so he dropped a lot of points, and it also affected his ranking. Going to the last week of April now, and Alcaraz, he wins in Barcelona, defending the title there, so didn't actually gain any points from that event. And Holger Runa, he won in Munich, also defending the title that he had won 12 months ago, so gets to keep his ranking. The only change in the rankings was Medvedev going up and Rude going down. 
But there were some points being lost with guys like Djokovic, Rublev, Rude, and FAA losing points from tournaments they had played 12 months ago. Then we headed over to Madrid and Carlos Alcaraz defending the title in Madrid and getting to keep all those points and keep close to Djokovic, who was occupying the number one spot at the time. There's only a little bit of a change in the middle though because Madrid was such a random event with Fritz going up and Oje Eliassime going down, but a lot of players lost points. Djokovic, City Pass, Rublev, Sinner, Oje Eliassime, Runa and Rude all dropping points at this event, but it didn't affect too many of the rankings just yet. Then we went to Rome, the last big event before the French Open. And Daniel Medvedev, he wins his first clay court title and the Klaivedev memes were strong during this time and actually really helped his ranking as well. He went up a spot as did Alcaraz after Djokovic dropping points. So again, another change at the top with Alcaraz going up, Djokovic going down. Medvedev gets to number two before the French Open, and Runa also got a little boost in the rankings. The week before the French Open, Fritz ended up going up one spot with Sino dropping down one spot after he made the semifinals of Geneva. So a little bit of a change there, but it didn't affect the seedings going into the French. Then the French Open, the second Grand Slam of the year, Novak Djokovic takes the win at the French Open, winning his second Grand Slam of the year, and it helped his ranking as he went back up to the number one spot, pushing both Medvedev and Alcaraz down a spot. Hashinov also jumped back into the top 10 after a successful French Open, with Oje Eliassime dropping down outside the top 10. So his great start to the 2022 season is now coming back to haunt him. And other points that were dropped, guys like Rublev, Medvedev, Sinner, and Oje Eliassime all dropping points after failing to defend those points that they made from 2022. Then we headed onto the grass courts and Tiafo wins in Stuttgart, which helped his ranking, getting him back into the top 10 at the expense of Karin Hashinov. Points that were lost, guys like Medvedev, Hashinov, and Sitsipas all dropping points after winning the first events or playing well in the first events of the grass season last year. Then the second week of the grass court season, Carlos Alcaraz, he wins the Queens Club event, which he needed to do to get back to world number one, and he did. He takes the number one spot ahead of Wimbledon, moving Djokovic down to number two, going into the third Grand Slam of the year. And again, Alcaraz just seems to always overtake Djokovic at the right time, just before the slams, to secure the number one seeds. Rublev also played pretty well, getting to the final of Hella, but Sinner was the one who got a boost in the rankings at the expense of Fritz, who dropped down one. As a result, Fritz losing a lot of points from last year's events. In the final week before the Grand Slam, of course, Wimbledon, the third slam of the year. We actually didn't have any of the top 10 in action, so no change to the rankings. Then we go to the third slam of the year, and Carlos Alcaraz gets the win. He wins Wimbledon in an absolute epic final. Five-set final, beats Djokovic, and keeps his number one ranking after that tournament. Of course, they did play at the French Open in the semifinals, where Djokovic got the win. So this rivalry just started to get a little bit more interesting now. However, there was no change to the rankings. Even though we had so many points up for grabs, the rankings stayed the same. All right, now we start getting onto the hard courts again. But before that, we play some clay court events. Rublev, he wins a clay court event in Bastard, taking out Rude in the final. However, there was no change to the rankings this week. Guys like Alcarez and Rude dropping points from 12 months ago, but it didn't change their ranking. Then the first events of the hard court season, the US Open series, of course, coming up. Taylor Fritz, he wins in Atlanta. However, it didn't result in any changes to the rankings, but there were some points that were lost. Guys like Sinner, Alcaraz and Tiafo all losing points from 12 months ago, but again, no changes to the rankings just yet. In the second week of the US Open Series, Pass wins his first title of the year in Los Cabos, which gave him a nice little boost in the rankings. He went up one spot, pushing Rude down a spot, and there were some points that were lost as well between Medvedev and Rublev, both winning events last year or playing well in events last year. They ended up dropping a few points here and there. Then we go to the biggest hardcore event since March, and Yannick Sinner, he wins his first 1,000 event of his career in Canada, and it resulted in a nice little boost to the rankings. Also, Runa, he got one spot higher as well in the rankings, so those guys are starting to shape up nicely in that middle section of the rankings. Both Rude and Rublev dropping down the rankings after losing points from 12 months ago. Guys like Rude, Runa, and Tiafo were the ones in the top 10 that did drop the most points at this part of the season. Then we went to Cincinnati, and of course, Djokovic playing in America for the first time in a couple of years, and he didn't disappoint. He takes out Alcaraz in the final, he gets that revenge, and wins the title in Cincinnati in an epic matchup as well, just like Wimbledon, except this time it was Djokovic's turn to win. Guys like Runa and Rude also got a boost in the rankings as Sidney Pass dropped down a lot in the rankings because of failing to defend the points that he made from the final last year. Guys like Medvedev, Sinner, and Rublev also losing a lot of points from Cincinnati in 2022. The week before the US Open, no changes to the rankings, and nobody played. So it was just pretty much like every single Grand Slam this year. Most of the players in the top 10 don't play the week before the big slam. And then, of course, we had the US Open, the final Grand Slam of the year. 
And Novak Djokovic, he wins the US Open, making it three out of four for the year. Taking out Medvedev in the final this time. Didn't have to play Alcaraz this time around. He almost did, though, because Medvedev beat Alcaraz to then play Djokovic. But Djokovic regains his top spot, pushing Alcaraz back down to number two. Guys like Pass, Rublev, Fritz, and Zverev also getting a boost in the rankings with guys like Sinner, Rude, and Tiafo dropping down the ranks. Of course, Alcaraz, Rude, Tiafo all making it to the semifinals or better last year, losing a lot of points. Also, Sinner and Rune are dropping a few points as well after not being able to play that well at the US Open compared to 12 months prior. Then we went back to the Davis Cup, the group stage, and there was no change in the rankings because, of course, Davis Cup is not worth any points. And then the Asian swing. We started going to the tournaments in China again for the first time in four years. And Sasha Zverev, he wins in Chengdu, the only player in the top 10 that actually played for points because everybody else played for the Labor Cup, or at least most of them did. And Team World won the Labor Cup, but of course, that's not worth any points. So there was no change to the rankings. Then we went to Beijing, and this was a big one because a lot of the big names were playing this event. And Yannick Sinner, he beats Elkaraz and Medvedev to win in Beijing, and he got a nice boost in the rankings. He went up three spots this week, pushing Runa, Sitipas, and Rublev down the ranks, and he started to put his name up there as one of these big four contenders. There were some other points that were lost as well with Djokovic and Runa losing points from 12 months ago in events that they didn't defend. Then we go to Shanghai for the first time in four years, and this is a really weird event because Djokovic didn't play. There were some massive names that did play, but didn't do that well. And her catch, he ends up winning his second Master 1000 title in the final, saving championship points, beating Rublev in that final. However, Rublev did get a boost in the rankings. He went up two spots. Rude went up a spot, and Zverev also went up a spot, with guys like Runa, Sidipas, and Fritz dropping down spots. Not because they didn't play well in Shanghai last year, because of course it wasn't an event. It was because guys like Djokovic, Fritz, Sidipas, and Medvedev all played well last year in Astana or in Tokyo, and those events weren't put in this part of the calendar because Shanghai came back. So there were a couple of changes in the rankings. They were a little bit harsh on some of the guys. Then we start going back to the indoor hard courts of Europe, and only one change with Fritz going up and Zverev going down, and some point changes as well with Runa and Pass losing points after making the final in Stockholm 12 months ago. Then we went to Vienna, one of the big events of the season, and Yannick Sinner wins again, beating Daniel Medvedev in the final. He wins in Vienna. Didn't get a boost in the rankings, but again, his form post the US Open has just been so, so good. We did have changes though with City Pass and Zverev going up with Runa and Fritz going down and some changes in the points as well with Medvedev, Runa and Alcaraz all losing points after failing to defend those points from 12 months prior. Then we head to the final week of the year, the Paris Indoors. Last chance for a lot of these guys to get into the A to B finals, of course, and Novak Djokovic. After a very tough week, he looked like he was struggling with some illness as well. He takes out Paris yet again in his first tournament since the US Open as well. So he was on a massive winning streak. He didn't get a boost in the rankings though because of course he was already number one. He just extended his lead over Alcaraz. But guys like Rude Zverev and Fritz all got a boost in the rankings because Runa, who was the defending champion, failed to defend the title. So he went down three spots. Guys like Runa, Alcaraz, and Rude all dropping points from playing the event 12 months ago. Then the final week of the year before the ATP Finals, all the points stripped from the ATP Finals, so guys like Djokovic, Rude, Rublev, Fritz, and Pass all losing points, which gave guys like Zverev, Runa, Herkatch a nice boost in the rankings. Fritz and Rude, who played really well at the ATP Finals last year, dropping a lot of points and unfortunately unable to defend those points. They dropped down the rankings, with Rude dropping out of the top 10 completely to end the season. And then, of course, the ATP Finals, the last event of the season. And again, Novak Djokovic winning the event. He was the defending champion. He did lose a match to Yannick Sinner along the way, but that didn't matter. He still wins the whole event and actually resulted in no changes to the top 10, which is so weird at the end of this season with so many points up for grabs to not have any change at the end of the year. That is very, very strange. But Novak Djokovic, he wins the ATP Finals and stays on top for another season. And then we have the Davis Cup with Italy taking out the Davis Cup Finals. Of course, Davis Cup not worth any points, but there was something to mention with Sinner taking out Djokovic to then go on and win with Team Italy and win the Davis Cup for the second time in their history. So that is what the rankings look like at the end of 2023. Some things to note though, and the changes that we had, of course, going back to the start of the season, guys like Alcaraz, Nadal, and Rude being that top three. Alcaraz goes down to number two after being number one to start the season. Nadal started at number two in the rankings to start the year. He's outside the top 600 now. And Kasper Rude at number three, he dropped down to number 11 in the world outside the top 10 after failing to replicate what he did in 2022. Pass, he went from number four to number six in the world. And Djokovic getting the biggest boost, going from five to one over the span of the last 12 months. Ogelia Sim also dropped 
from 6 to 29 in the rankings. Medvedev, he went from 7 up to number 3, with Rublev going from number 8 to number 5. Herkatch and Fritz, they just swapped over their rankings. And the guys that made it back into the top 10 or into the top 10 to end the year, Runa, he went from 11 to number 8. Zverev went from number 12 to number 7. And Sinner went from 15 to number 4 in the world, the biggest rise in the top 10. So that's what the top 10 looked like. Let me know down in the comments below, what was the most exciting thing about the rankings for you this year? I love the fact that we had the number one ranking going back and forth multiple times throughout the season. And also seeing guys like Sinner and Runa going up the rankings and getting into that top four for the first time, getting some career high rankings there. The rise of Medvedev again. Remember Medvedev at the start of the year dropped out of the top 10 and then of course ended up at number three in the world. So he got to turn his season around, but let me know in the comments below. What was the craziest thing or the best thing about the rankings in 2023?